We're here at Grove Studios on Acoustic Alternatives. I'm John Bomarito, Grove Studios in Ypsilanti, the home of the podcast for the last two plus years. I'm grateful for them for letting me uh, do it here, encouraging me to do a podcast, reminding me of how much I miss doing interviews with artists as they pass through town or some of my local favorites. And somebody I've been trying to track down for the podcast since the pandemic started, and he just wasn't ready. And I understand. Being in the same room with people, Stephen, we weren't ready for that. Hey, it all came. It, it happened when it was supposed to. It did. And eventually, people stopped wearing masks when they came to visit me. If you go back and watch the first, like, 10, we're wearing masks until the singing happens and then you go down. Yeah. But we got here. And well, we didn't know, you know? I mean, it, it, it just, yeah, there was so much. It was, there was a lot that we didn't know. We did not. Know? Now we're okay. Yeah. We're bound to get it at least once, and we're going to live, most of us. My association and love, I'm, I'm sorry to say that that way, my association with your music started way back in 2005, uh, this radio station that I, actually I wasn't even working there yet when I first heard Start the Day Early, and then I started working there, and your visits to that radio station became a regular, every time you were in town thing, and we just love your music, and I I just, I, I love chatting with you, and I feel like we've we formed a pretty good friendship Me over too. the years. Me and, too, man. So many good memories, too. Yeah, I lo I lo I've, I've loved it and appreciate the support. No problem. That was a, a band album. You actually had a solo career 10 years before that that you've returned to since those days. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I'm happy to see that you're out there continuing to do this. I know this is not the best way to make a living for anybody. And sometimes, you know, people might want to, to call it a day. Well, and, and try I, I mean, I don't know about that, though. It's, it kind of is the best living if it's what you do. You know, like it's... It's not the best living for everybody, yes. you know? And what I said the other day that we ended up writing down was, I said, uh, I said, this is a great, it's a great, what did I say? It's a great living, but it's a hard job, <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's like, there you go. Yeah, but I, yeah, I know what you mean. So the last, it's been a while since I've seen you, but there's definitely a new album called Keep It Up, Kid, which is over here somewhere. I can't see it behind my notes. There it is. It's in the camera view, I think. Uh, would you like to do a song from that before we chat a little bit? Sure, sure. What song? Uh, yeah, let's do, um, let's do this one. Let's do this one. It's called It Goes Fast. <laughs> Seems like only yesterday you climbed up in that bus Picture with a big okay and you're smiling back at us Birthdays and recitals driving you all over town We were both so busy trying not to let you down But love's a one-way street and you will always have my heart I know you're in a rush You were from the very start So if I hold your hand too long Or I embarrass you in class No I'm only hanging on Cause it goes fast It goes fast I was in a cradle and I work most every day Fumbling for the words, trying to know what I should say When was I to push you? When was I to let you be? If we had each other's eyes, can you imagine what we'd see? But love's a one-way street and I know that much is true I sometimes got frustrated Saw so much of me and you But all of your best moments And the worst ones too won't last It's like smoke right through your hands It goes fast It goes fast goes fast The day your car rolls out that driveway It doesn't park here anymore That is the day that we were getting you ready 
ready for to drive away I hope I'm there to see it when you have your own someday the distance between then and now it was shorter than we knew and if you don't believe me dear one day you'll know it too we're not the first to feel this way and we will not be the last there's something about that old cliche It goes fast It goes fast It goes fast It goes fast Such a beautiful song. Stephen Kellogg's my guest on Acoustic Alternatives. It goes fast. can be found on Keep It Up Kid, his latest release. And I've never met your family. I feel like I know them, though, through your songs and the video there on that one. I mean... The video was was fun because it, we really thought of it very late. You know, we just like, oh, I guess we need a video, you know? And we, and we called my friend Britt Nisko and said, we have all this old footage. And then we came up with this idea, what if... She said, would your daughter ever want to, like, do an interview? You know, so so much of this is sort of about the growth of the kids and stuff. And so we agreed we said that she would do it, but I didn't see it. She, I wasn't there to see the interview, so I didn't see it until we saw a cut. And then and then what Britt did that I didn't expect is she cut in. She cut it in, in the middle of the video. And it's yeah. just, it's really, it's something. It's it, I, I will treasure that video always yeah it was moving yeah very much so yeah well my friend mark robert says he's like kellogg you have pretty much put everything except your kids social security numbers into your music <laughs> at this point and he's not wrong it was never my intent but uh that's kind of where we ended up <laughs> well we as fans appreciate it because we feel like we're connecting with you on a level that we don't connect with other artists cool for sure Thank and you. though i've known you for a long time i don't know a lot about like Young Stephen, like, where did you grow up? Did you grow up in Boston? No, I grew up, uh, so I grew up in southern Connecticut um, in a town called Bridgeport, a town called Fairfield, which was kind of two very different towns, but it's where my parents live. So I spent time in both. And, uh, you know, my parents split up when I was very young, and which I think is probably easier than having them split up later. Uh, and they stayed close together, which was great. Um, but... I don't know. I, I, you know, I, I was, my dad, I used to put me to sleep t listening to Cat Stevens' Tea for the Tillerman. Mm. And, and I think that and the combination of the divorce and just the natural disposition towards melancholia, you know, I, I always had, um, the blues, mm. you know, like not depression, but the blues, you know, and, and as an adult, it's much easier to make sense of as a kid, I sort of, you feel lonely a yeah. lot, you know. And You're that, an only kid. No, I, but my but my old my siblings are very far apart in age. Closest one six and a half years. So we're yeah. all like it's almost like being an only child, you know. I'm not that close with my older sister. I like her, but we're not that close. Yeah. Yeah, six and years. I'm, I mean I'm very close to them now, but that because I think part of it is because we were we were not stepping on each other's toes at all. Yeah. You know, we're having kids that are much closer in age, I can see. There's huge benefits and plenty, you know, it's hard. It's much harder for them not to get in each other's way than it was for my siblings and I. Would I have met you and thought you were a dork or a cool kid? Um, not that man, it's a, that's a great question. I love it. it. But it's I was really somewhere in between. Um, and by the time I got to high school, um, in hindsight, people must have thought I was a cool kid. I was the class president. Oh, yeah. You know, and I was... Uh, I had I had a superlative my senior year the prettiest girlfriend like I was in the plays like so here's the thing I, I guess I was you know I'm sure people looked and went oh no he's like he, 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 but it was wildly uncomfortable you know mm -hmm. just just 
I just, other than my couple of friends, I just dreaded, you know, being a kid. I, I don't have, it wasn't a good experience, you know? And mm. that wasn't anybody's fault. Like, my parents were trying, everybody's trying, and there I was fitting in but feeling sort of like dying inside. And then um, I got to college, and that was kind of the beginning of life, I feel like, you know? You're adulting. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, I love it. I love 46. It's how old I am now. I just, it keeps getting, I just love, it's like relief from, it's like I was born to be (laughs) middle-aged, you know? And I'm much more comfortable now than I was then. Other than meeting your wife at a very early age, and now you've got that future with her. Did you know where your future was going then? Did you ever think you'd be touring the world and singing songs for people and... Visiting, visiting yeah. with me every couple of years. <laughs> I, I, you know, I certainly, when I went to my first concert, and I mean, it's it's like the writing was on the wall, but I didn't really think it was a viable option, which is a thing that I feel like a lot of artists, especially if you you know you grow up and and everybody's with this profession is like that's a tough living. What are your you know what's your fallback? And so I didn't really think that it was um, possible until college, you know, and being like, I can stain decks for $6 an hour, or I can play a gig, you know, and make a couple of hundred bucks. It just was no, there was no, and then you start thinking, well, maybe I could do this, but, um, it, it, I was, I guess I was trying to aim at something a little more that involved more fame and fortune. And, and I'm relieved to not have the the fame aspect. <laughs> I could use a little more of the fortune <laughs> aspect. Um, but yeah. you know, I definitely on the tour I'm on right now. I I keep going. Wow, I guess I guess we did it. Like it, we did what we were trying to do, more or less. You yeah. know, yeah, it's pretty cool. You know, people know who you are. People come to see you too. I yeah, mean, I I try yeah. not to miss a Kellogg show if I can possibly help it. I've always enjoyed your live performances with the band or solo. And you're an entertaining person to watch. You tell great stories. I love your songs. I mean, for me, it's thanks, John. It's a I holiday. Appreciate it. Yeah, I I feel like we're getting better with age, and and so I and I really treasure the shows a lot. I think for the first decade, maybe even fifteen years, I was mostly. You know, you walk on stage with f- more fear, you know, like I, I, like you're taking a test and you're trying to get it right, you know, and then the show would be over in the relief. Um, and now it's still exciting to play a show, but uh, I just look, I, I'm like, neat. I get to, I have, I have things I want to say and things I want to share, and uh, you share them with whoever, you know, is in the room, and that's just a real gift in a way. You know, there's a... Uh, it's easier to have an open heart now, I think. And that also seems to be tied to the middle-aged era, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Advocate for middle-aging. <laughs> if there is such a thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, growing up, you were probably an 80s, 90s rock kid, right? So the, the bands that might have influenced your... I mean, it might have influenced you, but, like, made you want to play guitar. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, it's... I, it was really, it was all that T for the Tillerman. I mean, you, really? you know that record? That record is so sad. And I, would, I don't know it as well as you do, but okay, I own it. So I go to sleep to that. So you got that You got that on the one hand, and then you go see, my sister takes me to see Whitesnake, and it's just exciting as all, you know, so I would just draw the little pictures. And this T-shirt I'm wearing, I'm wearing my own T-shirt today. We're a little <laughs> low on laundry. Um, <laughs> this and <laughs> this was modeled after my first White Snake T-shirt. And it's funny because it's not really selling. And my manager said, she's like, I don't know if that's the demo, if they're going to appreciate a White Snake inspired T-shirt as much as, as you are. But um, I was like, I just want to do this because I can. Um, so it was those things that made me want to play music. And then, of course, you know, then you get bands like Counting Crows and stuff like that in the 90s that are doing literate but catchy. I mean, and that towed the wet sprocket. You know, these were bands that that uh, that sort of gave me a window into, of possibility into, of like, I think maybe I could do that, you know. And um, so then they had sort of an influence and then... The Grateful Dead had a big influence on me, you know. I've ch- played a totally different show every night of this tour. We're 20 shows in. Hmm. Just, uh, I just love the idea that you you paint a canvas every night that's only going to exist once. It's the only time it's going to happen. And 
when you play a, a set, I think you can perfect the music, and that's great. But you also, then you go, Chicago was good because they clapped louder or, you know, they, I got a bigger laugh. Like you're not gauging it on that internal experience in the same way. And believe me, I'm going to make so many mistakes every tonight and every night. So it's, there are, there are uh, attributes to doing it the other way. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but the reason I do it this way is, is what I'm talking about here, you know. I'm going to skip ahead to a question because it seems to fit here better. You have done with at least with the Sixers you used to do a show where you'd cover a full album, Full Moon Fever, Purple mm -hmm. Rain. Yeah, and obviously you're not doing that anymore. But it made me think about like if you could front an existing band, who would it be? Because I just thought like maybe John Mayer took the job you wanted fronting the Dead. Maybe you would have loved that job. You, you know the band that I would front is the Counting Crows. I, I would. Um, they're the band I relate to the most in terms of the way that they play, the instrumentation. The um, I don't think I've ever seen. I have a bunch of bands I love, but the thing that I love about Counting Crows, and I saw it up close last summer because we toured, yes. and, is that they, Adam is the uh, ringleader of the circus of their band, and that's always that's what I did in the Sixers. That's what I try to do in the bands that I bring out now. Um, but but they are so. Uh, a, they've learned to musically respond to lyrics you know that's uh and that to me is my favorite artistic thing to do with a band is like i'm gonna sing something from my heart and i want you to reflect it musically back to me you know and support it and know where we're going and that's the journey hmm. so um you know Adam has a long life ahead of him, but if they ever needed somebody to step in on something, I, that's the band I would want to uh, go play with. We'll circle around back to them because there is a question related to them in a bit, but how about another song? Yeah. All right, well, you know, you and I have talked about mental health over the year. Oh, yeah. Uh, and so I'm going to sing you my... This is my favorite one off the new record to do. And, uh, and after I wrote it, you know, people... Did call they're called and were like, "Are you okay, man?" You know, and I said, "I am okay, but I'm okay because I wrote this, and I'm okay." Uh, you know, if you if you haven't felt some challenge in the last few years, you're not paying enough attention to the world. You know, so um, I love singing this song. Just no salutations by chance. No, it's uh, called "If Anyone Is Listening." I'm born and raised in New England It's where I hope to die Surrounded by a family That I've tried to do right by And I am leaving them these songs And the best of my intentions and A million complications that we never really mentioned If anyone is listening Could you say a prayer for me I'm asking for a miracle this time Cause the truth is I'm barely getting by In confidence I talk to you About all of my rejections You led me to the wilderness But you offered no protection While you made yourself the victim I pretended I was strong We played our part so faithfully Hoped no one would catch on If anyone is listening If you hear me whispering I'm asking for a miracle It's true Cause the truth is I don't know what else to do I've been looking for a break so many years The day that I stop searching Is the 
the day I disappear. If you knew what I was thinking, you wouldn't think that I was nice. It's a secret, still a secret, if you've kept it all your life. I still can't believe you left us. That'll never be okay. There is so much information in the things we do not say. And my heart broke when I was younger. And that ain't nobody's fault. Love is for the losing. It's worth a damn at all If anyone is listening I wish I felt you here with me I'm asking for a miracle right now yeah. And if God is listening I've been trying to believe I'm asking for a miracle I know Cause the truth is I got nowhere else to go That is beautiful, sir. From Keep It Up Kids, Stephen Kellogg's here on Acoustic Alternatives. And the uh, reason I mentioned the other song is because it has a lyric that kind of fits in with the same topic. It's, it's, it's okay. To not be okay. It's, it's okay, okay to, not to be, be okay, okay now. Yeah. yeah, I was excited when we stumbled on that one. Yeah, that uh, stood out to me like, oh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I got to learn how to play that song. I haven't played it live yet. Uh, Shady's been asking for it. Shady's my tour manager. He's heard all the songs. So he's like, when do we get no salutations? <laughs> Working on it. I hope he doesn't get sued because uh, Slim Shady, Eminem, is suing somebody for using Shady. I forget who it is now, but like, I don't know. He's like, do you own Shady? You're just, that's your character name. It's a word. Right? It's a word, dude. Can't, yeah. But anyway. <laughs> so you've. What will people say when it's when the sun casts across a tree? Eminem. You know? <laughs> yeah. So over your career, you've covered a lot of ground physically, but you've also covered a lot of things. Like you've done more than just sing and, and write songs and play for people. You've done. A film, Last Man Standing. Uh, I don't know if that was ever part of your like grand plan when you started out as a songwriter, but no, I, <laughs> I did not expect to be part of that. Or, um, or yeah, books, all of this stuff. I, no, I just kind of books. I was going to bring that up. Yeah, There's a book. If you don't know about the book, the book. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I. I you look, you look like way ahead and dream things, but I, there's there's a defense mechanism that a lot of us have, myself included, where you you don't really say what you hope happens because if you don't say it, then you can't fail at it. You know, it's like you keep one foot. You know, you just kind of you don't set say. yourself up for disappointment. Yeah. So for a long time, you know, you kind of don't declare things or whatever. And, um, uh, and so on the one hand, no, I didn't expect to do a lot of things that I did. On the other hand, it's always felt right when, when it, when it was like happening, you know, and, um, and now I'm, it's, now I'm so glad to, I mean, I, it's like, what's next, you know, what are we going to do next? We it's did fun. A, you did a TEDx talk that check that box. Virtual tour. Lots of people were doing virtual tours, doing the uh, that but you did a podcast too. I mean, you had Adam Duritz on, Laura McKenna on. I mean, that's another check, another thing you did. Um, the book is beautiful. I mean, I, I got to tell you, my favorite chapter is is that first one when you're talking about love and marriage and just the way you write about your love for your wife in there. If anybody wants to know what perfect love looks like, read that first chapter or have you read it to them because awesome. there is an audio version of it. It awesome. really it really got to me. Uh, makes me so happy, man. That's so great. Yeah. Yeah. I uh I it, it was a very big learning curve writing a book and figuring out how to get the tone of voice onto the page, different muscles. But I do think I'll do more of that. I I'm hoping to write another uh, nonfiction and then I have an idea for that uh, and then I am on the fourth draft of a, of a novel that I'm co-authoring with Allison Hammer and we're really closing in on it so that's cool. probably 
the next thing that'll hit. Although that may be my only novel. I'm not sure I'll do that again, <laughs> but you know, hey, we're, we're trying things out. Well, just the way you write about your family and your songs, uh, you're going to be well cared for as an older man, I think. I think you've shown them such love that there's no way they're ever going to be like, Dad was such a jerk. He's on the road all the time. Never... No, he obviously loves you. Hopefully, John. I don't know. You know, we don't know. We don't know what's no, going to happen. But I, I, am, I send a lot of postcards home. Uh, everywhere I go, I send them postcards so that they, if they, you know, don't feel loved, there'll be a lot of evidence to the contrary. <laughs> For sure. When you look back at the highlights of your life, where does your daughter singing on stage with you and the Counting Crows fit in? <laughs> like man somewhere. it's up there that is up there um that is way it's way up there you know last summer um i got very sick right before all that went down with covid but also i had some stuff i had to do and it was very uh it was so hard like and and it really like cleared the decks for what a oh, man it's just you get sick and you're scared and it's all it feels scary and then to find yourself a month later, you know, so we sang um, my song, Almost Woke You Up, every night with Counting Crows during Counting Crows set. We recorded it. We're going to release it this year. Adam just awesome. said we can go ahead and do that. So we have this live version that we're going to release, and that's exciting. And, you know, I had the, my girls on one side and this band I've adored for three decades on the other side, and... You know, for that night, it's as good as your life could ever be. You know, I cannot imagine any. There are moments as fine, but no, none finer. You know, your heart must have been really full. <laughs> it was. It was, and you know, and what I would, what I would, it was almost like staring right into the sun. But I would look, try to look at Adam's eyes directly and my girl's eyes, like. And I would hold the eye contact for a bit, but it was just, you were trying to perform. So you're like, I can't. I love to skirt that emotional thread. And sometimes I fall over the edge and I get too teary. And, you know, it can be charming, but it's also not where I want to end up. I like to be right on the edge of feeling all those emotions, with, but still able to do it. And so I would look at them and then I'd feel it. And then you look away back to the crowd and look <laughs> and just like, because that's how much that's, it's like, the expansion of the heart, you know? That was really cool. When I read about that, I'm like, oh, that must have been a great moment. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Because I've known you for a while, you seem like the kind of guy that if you've ever achieved the success of, say, a Springsteen level where you're mm -hmm. playing that big, you know, you've got that, that kind of power behind you, you would have used your powers for good, but I don't know what your chosen charity would have been. Like, if you had been mm. chosen, a, like, a thing to champion. Oh. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I, I've thought about that a lot, and I, and I still... You know, I, I don't, I'm not going to be Springsteen, but it's, but I'm still, there's enough ambition here where I, I have some years left in me they're, they're, that are going to be a little different than what I've been doing now. I'm working on kind of a one man show that's a little more heavy on storytelling. Really love that. Um, uh, I, whatever it ends up being, I, I tempt the universe to put enough you know, power and into my hands that I can do good because I do have some stuff on my on my hit list. I'm a real sucker for things that, that are undeniable for all people, like, you know, pediatric cancer and things like that. I love to get behind that because it's like we can all agree that this, you know, there's just, there are certain issues that don't split the thing. Um, but I do have some other ones, you know, I've been, I've had a lot of, I've been really touched by gun violence has come shockingly close to my life on a number Hook. of occasions. Sandy Hook, right? Sandy Hook, you know, my guitarist's parents were murdered at the point of a gun. So I have strong feelings about it. I also have a family full of hunters and, and it is shocking and gross to me that we can't get a dialogue happening where we just go, hey, this is no good. Um, there's that we can do better than we're doing, and it doesn't. It's it, that it's been shut down the way it has. I'm sure that uh, I would wade into those waters, and 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 I do a little bit, but um, uh, that would be something I'd probably try to 
find some middle because I, I I feel like a walking test case for middle grounds. You know, like mm-hmm. it's just you got to yeah. be able to speak as adults about these things. You, you see know? both sides, so yeah, for sure. If you can't see, and both I'm grateful sides. for those who sort of infuse it into the dialogue. I thought what Matthew uh, McConaughey had put out a while back was wonderful. It was like. Uh, you know, and of course he was met with tons of resistance, but I don't, he, you know, he's just so, it's like, let's, let's have a conversation. Let's come to the table with a conversation. Mm-hmm. We got to do this. We owe it to, owe it to all these people who are affected by, uh, this stuff, you know? So. Stephen Kellogg is my guest on Acoustic Alternatives. We're at Grove Studios. Uh, maybe uh, sometime Stephen will be passing through town and say, I wish I had a place to practice with my band. Down the hall, Stephen, there's some big rooms that you really? can bring your band in and rent okay. 24-7. It's very inexpensive, keypad operation. Cool. And they've been very kind to me in letting me do the podcast here and encouraging me to continue doing what I was doing, like I said, at the top of the broadcast. And I probably wouldn't have continue doing this without them so yeah it's a cool place i'll show you around before you go but yeah. uh, new album's called keep it up kid you have another song in you i have a few more questions i, I sure do watching yeah. time here so but... i'm gonna jump off the keep it up kid album sure and go way back because it's, it's you and me here yeah and I'm part of our tradition is hitting songs that we don't always hit and I, when i just came in and sat down i thought of my old uncle andy who uh was my step uncle and he was a real character. He went to jail for dealing drugs, mm. and he uh, he went to jail. And and at my my step my stepmother and fa- and father thought it would be a, a great idea to put the two of us rooming together with bunk beds. So I'd find <laughs> these big bags of weed. And, I mean, it was crazy. But when I started to play music for a living, um, there was no one who was prouder of it all. You know, like he he just. And he passed away young, which wasn't surprising and and anything. But uh, I have this song on the first album that you that you found, and I, I rarely play it. I thought it'd be fun to play it here on the podcast. It's called Blue Jean. So. I know you don't like when I say this. Was there in the letter you sent? I've been so long in the shadow. I've been wondering where the light went I've been wondering Where the light went In this home You know lately I've been feeling So alone Let's go now he was 19 I called him Blue Jean It was his parents First accident He had long hair He drove like a nightmare And I followed him Everywhere he went He played the guitar Watched all the big stars Moved away after one year of school Joined in the Marines Made it about eight weeks But to me, he was the epitome of cool But I've been wondering Where the light went this home You know lately I've been feeling So long And when you're young You can go either way But for my part I believed in you then But it's been so long Since we saw what you look like These days I don't fight anyone came on a Monday 
hurt in the worst way. They said that he'd been busted up in Maine. Now he's doing eight years. It's all of our worst fear. And this family here, it ain't ever been the same. No, oh, yeah, I've been wondering. Where the I went in this home? Cause you know, lately, yeah, I have been feeling so alone, so alone, so alone. I've been so alone, yeah, so alone. I don't think I've ever heard you do that live. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a, it's a rarity. It's hey. a rarity, but I was feeling it. You know, you just feel songs at a time. I, I've probably done that song half a dozen times. I don't know. Stephen Kellogg's my guest on Acoustic Alternatives. Since we're in the Wayback Machine, I went and I was listening to some of the old interviews that were done at my station, not necessarily all by me, but some of them were like, I, I caught the one we did at Borders together. And I feel like, oh, you an apology because there I was bringing up depression in front of the entire crowd and you kind of made me feel like I felt like I made you uncomfortable. So I'm apologizing many years later for making you feel Not bad. Not at um, all. Cool. No, you, you, you know, I tell I'm, – I'm a very direct person. If you say something to me and it doesn't land, I will be like – I'll mention it. But I also uh, – it's, it's a sign of love, you know. I wouldn't bother if I didn't love the people I was talking to, you know. Rob Walker, my first boss, also mentioned in one of the interviews or that you did with him that at that time we were the most supportive station in the country playing Start the Day Early. I was like, really? Our station was the one that really kind of made a difference, huh? Okay. Yeah, that's cool. That's why you kept coming back to Ann Arbor, I guess. Yeah, that's why we kept waking up so early to get to all these radio stations. You know, like we were, oh, God, we never slept those days. It probably was, don't miss that much, do you? <laughs> I miss being played on the radio. I miss that. But yeah. I don't miss the lack of sleep, no. I'm in a group of uh, radio people, label people, and we have like a song of the week thing. We're supposed to send each other a song that we well, that's cool. want people to know. And this week I sent to the ones who, who need it most. most. Cool. And no one in the group who loves you, some several already loved your music, didn't know you had a new album out. Yeah, I know. It's hard to get the word out there when you like you. We used to, well, the labels used to just pay people to tell people that the albums existed. Yeah. You know, and without that, you really. Uh, other than actual fans, it's hard to get it around. So you're not servicing this one to radio then? It's just kind of... I don't know how to do it. I don't think my management knows how to do it. Oh. I don't think my agent knows how to do it. I don't think anybody on our team knows how to do it anymore. I'll have to see if I can help. Yeah, we'll talk we about should talk later. about it. Yeah. I mean, I I want people to know, you know? It's, it's, a, a, very, it's uh, an excellent... It was in my top 15 of last year's yeah. releases for sure. But. Yeah, cool. Well, yeah. Hopefully, though, that's good. Thanks for sending it. That's oh, one way people could know. Well, yeah. Two people are already like, really? He's got a new record? I was like, yes, it's been out yeah. for a while. Technically, it came out last year because it was I know. I wish, I wish we had that song in our like arsenal when we had the muscle. It would have been fun because it's a, it's a pretty fun song that when it hits your, you know, kind of blows your hair back when it, that needle uh, drop happens. Yeah. It actually, I'm not necessarily because I think I even saw you perform with them once, but it has a need to breathe quality to it. Like that, that love. That yeah. big, like big part it's makes like me feel five thousand vocals to it. I mean, it's not actually five thousand vocals, but it feels like it. It feels, uh, you know, that's that's all Sam Getz and Jimmy Weaver who produced it. They 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 knew how to get that feeling, and and it feels right for the song. So it wasn't a trick or anything. It's just it's uh, they had a vision for it, and uh, and I I get a kick out of it when I hear it. So how to say goodbye is the next video. Mm -hmm. If you were servicing something to radio, which would you pick? Because I mean, you had a video already for. Um, gosh, I don't even know. Someone would have to tell me what. I, I I don't know. I don't. I would service whatever they'd be willing to play. I think you I know? just told you what it was. <laughs> for the ones who need it most. I think that's a radio yeah. song. It really yeah. is. It's got a. So. It's a very uplifting f song. It's positive. So yeah. I think people need that's to check. That's what they always used to tell us: give us tempo, give us tempo, and yep. then the biggest song in the country would be some ballad. You're like, well, okay, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> But Shady Esperanto got a fair amount of airplay for you. Yeah, top top ten. Yeah. Uh oh. <coughs> you okay? Getting a little tickled. Okay. Well, we'll wrap it up with one final question then. 
I don't want this to happen, but if your career were to end today, musically speaking, what song would you want to be remembered for? It's either Satisfied Ma'am. That would have been my guess. Or Thanksgiving. Which I, I One get, of those two. She here actually gets a fair amount of airplay as well. Yeah. <laughs> those would be the ones. They're great songs. <coughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have. I, I feel like I have a little... I just got a tickle. Yeah. Well, we're, I, I will tell you how much I appreciate you making time for me today. I have many more questions, but I know you have a schedule to speak to today. So we'll get on to seeing you in concert tonight, which is not, this is not a live thing. So people hearing me say that are going to be jealous because I get to see you perform tonight and they don't. There'll be others. No, it's been great, great chatting with you. As always, thank you for the thoughtful questions and the invitation to come in and sing some songs. I, I have enjoyed this immensely. I hope it wasn't too pesky because I kept asking over and over. Over the last two years. But no, like I told you, I said no when I couldn't make yeah. it. And then when I could, we made it. And I'm yeah. glad. It, it's perfect. This is a perfect time to come in. Perfect. Keep it up, kids. The new album. If you don't know about the book, please check out the book. It's been out for a while, but it's out there. And uh, explore the Stephen Kellogg catalog, please. Acoustic Alternatives from Grove Studios in Ypsilanti. Look them up as well if you're looking for a place. They're uh, excellent hosts. And uh, more podcasts coming soon. <laughs>